Bats Class fans, welcome back to the channel. I've been gone for a few days. Did a birthday trip with my wife Blondie down there in Pine Island Sound and Matt Lachey. And Pine Island itself, as you saw in the first clip, has still got a lot of hurricane-stricken remnants uh, around the island. So you know that they're far from over the Ian Hangover, but they have come back quite a bit. The bars and the restaurants back in business. The locals are getting back to normal, getting a lot of their their day-to-day -day lives back to where it should be. Uh, and I can tell you from the two days of fishing that we had down there, outstanding. Uh, we were guided by Captain Cody Pierce. Now, Cody's a regular on Flats Class TV. You've seen him there quite often. And uh, he is the new water keeper. So not only did he show us an incredible time on the water, but uh, there's always an education about the history of the area when you fish with Cody. So there's a little bit of that in this video and a lot of good fishing. When we come back, I'm gonna show you up there on my casting platform, a rod and reel combo that I think you're gonna be impressed with. It's gonna make a, it's gonna be a game changer for some of you as far as casting distance goes with light lures. But go check out the action. We'll be right back and we'll talk about this. All of a sudden I saw him swimming up behind it and I was like, I'm just going to let this one, I'm going to let him catch up to it. <laughs> I'm let that one catch up to it. I saw him, he was on the bottom, he was just trying to get it for him back in here. I'll tell you what, that jig catches everything. there now. I was kidding about the zing pow moment. Turtles, thank you. Yes, I know. 
15 feet. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. So this is this is the mound. You can just now start to see the elevation in there. Oh yeah, you see it going up. And it's this is the one that I camp at all the time. But you camp on this? I do. Before the storm, there was little trails I had in here. And that mound, like I said, is, is really tall, but on top of it is an old uh, rain system from the 1800s. So there were, you know, some of the oh first homesteaders gosh. had a uh, homestead here. But this was, you know, and you can't tell, but it's it's, it's only, you know, 150 feet long, so it's pretty small. You know? This is one of the more special ones because it, it has not been uh, molested. There isn't any signs of them poaching and you know, digging, looking for artifacts and stuff. It's all original. I'd love to take you in there, but it's pretty sketchy. But you can just kind of get the idea of it. See some of it. Oh my gosh, have you tried to go back in there? Yes, I've been in since the storm. Okay. And there's a concrete um, rain system. And you got this one put on the state registry? I did. So this this mound, I had, you know, informed some of the authorities about it, and it ended up not being on the national registry of, of sites. So now it's protected, thankfully, and hopefully it'll remain that way many generations to come. Might be on the inside of him a little bit. Yeah. He's following, got it? Yes! Oh. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. That is awesome. <laughs> and amazing because I've had a rough day. <laughs> Dude, that's a giant trout. Yeah. If it is, I'm going to get that out. It's rubberized that. Oh, look, he's getting eaten. He's getting eaten by some. A redfish is trying to eat him. I swear to you. Dude, that was nuts. One of those redfish just hit him. Did you see that? Is he bleeding? No, he's not bleeding. Good job. Good job. Put them in the water, baby. Got my slam. Yeah, you got the slam. Another Sight trout. Sight fish the trout. Sight fish them. <laughs> that one was awesome. <laughs> the fish was on premium. A good one too, man. He's pretty. So that was only day one. Have a whole nother day of, of fish fighting action to share with you. But uh, as you can see, the karma for, for Blondie changed by picking up that plastic balloon in the water. Um, after that, she really caught fire. And day two, I promise, she catches even more. But let me show or share with you uh, a rod that came in just prior uh, to, to that trip and I wanted to try it out with her because a lot of my older clientele and lady clientele I like to have them with these short seven foot rods but oftentimes because they're shorter they don't cast quite as far but this one's a little bit different so here's the model number all right this is the Terramar from Shimano and this is the southeast version this particular one it's a seven foot uh, medium action and it's moderate fast. What does moderate fast means? It means it's really not fast. It's more of a parabolic rod. So it, it loads and unloads smoothly. Uh, bends a little bit deeper in the blank. You know, as you can see, I'll, I'll try to get you where you can see it. So it bend, bends a little bit further back in the blank, but her accuracy was really good. Now, how did I combat uh, casting distance? 
Well, I spooled up this little van. This is a Vanford 2000. I spooled it up with a five pound Power Pro. That's right, five pound Power Pro. So this stuff is so thin. Another thing is the water was very clean and clear. So when you're using really thin braid, like five, eight and five pound braids, they don't have the same reflectivity that larger braids like 10 and 15 pound would. So they're harder for the fish to see. I also tied on a super long leader. So I've got a leader that starts, it's literally five or six feet long. But then I tied on a little extra knot right here to put some bite tippet on because she did tangle with a few snook. We lost one really good one. Uh, I didn't even get my camera on for that one, but uh, she caught a couple smaller ones. She got her slam both days. And then at the business end, I had her throw in different baits, but this particular one here, this is the four inch scented, if you will, uh, dark and stormy. Now this is a proprietary color of ours that, that Z-Man has. Uh, it actually has the North Carolina state trout record on this color, believe it or not. Now it comes in a four and a five inch uh, jerk shad profile, but in this four inch one, it allowed her to make those little touch casts without lots of splash. She could sight fish these fish. And well, as you saw, she did quite well. So if you're looking for a setup that's gonna add some accuracy, some casting distance, and you don't gotta get your weight into it to really cast it out there, um, maybe you're a kayak angler, look into this setup here. Vanford 2000, that, this uh, seven foot Terramar, it's a, good, it's a good package. Now, we're gonna go back to day two, and then when we come back, I'll talk a little bit more about some technique. Rodeo fishing. Real done quick. There you go. That is That's a nice one. Solid one. Nope, nope, nope. I was going to say, reach out, extend those arms. A little bit different on that lighter gear. Yeah. It's like five pound power pro on on a very soft soft rod. You get that you get that great cast out of this stuff. It's so delicate, but then when you gotta you gotta stick a big you fish, it's tough. Him, yeah. it's tough. It's tough. You get the net. Good idea. He's ready. All right. Great job. And it's on, oh, it's on my dark and stormy. It's right on the dark and stormy. Great. Okay. Mm. Whoa. That's the way we do it. Out of the woods now? Oh yeah, okay, I got it in the open. Oh. You did great, you pulled it off. Oh, that's all I could think of was, stay out of the woods, stay out of the woods. Dark and stormy is treating you good. 
Oh my god! Look at that beauty. Mm -hmm. Even bigger. Lache fishing trip with the Calusa waterkeeper. Good job. All right, let's get that that bait out of its mouth and put them in the water. Yeah, they they twist the they twist it up. They just won't eat it. There's just so many of them here too. Fish are all over it too. I saw him swimming behind it. He was way off the bank too. Those water snakes are so impressive. See where the black goes left to right across the well blondie did a fantastic job on day two she got to sight fish a few more fish making some real precision casts with that setup did quite well uh, we owe all of our success actually to the expertise of captain cody pierce uh, he's a native guide down there and does just a fantastic job he's kind of suppressing his business now only to a few clients because he has a full-time job as the calusa waterkeeper which is a very important role down there uh, it's not about just measuring or taking tests of the water on a regular basis. There's a lot of awareness uh, that he's going to bring to the table. And he even told us about a little juvenile tarpon uh, thing that he's got going on there that he's working with BTT on. So um, if you want to visit the area, it is in great health. And they have definitely economically started to rebound some. So restaurants are open, there's plenty of accommodations to stay, and the fishing's fantastic. A lot of professional, good guides down there. Guides like Captain Danny Latham, Captain Rhett Morris is down there. Um, Captain Corey McGuire, there's a lot of good, solid guides down there. Captain Ozzie Fisher. So there's some fantastic native guides down there that could show you an epic adventure. So do not be afraid to wander down to Southwest Florida since Ian, because a lot of the fishing is completely unspoiled down there. We fished for two solid days down there with Cody uh, and really were not bothered at all with anglers in the backcountry where we were fishing. We fished a few shoals and we saw, you know, the Easter weekend traffic running up and down the channel, but no one was bothering us and we were able to sight fish quite a bit out in the open. So really good time. I'm going to share with you this little bait here. This is the little TRD minnows. Um, one of my favorite little baits, and those of you that are Little John fans, this is this is the answer on the Z-Man side, is this little TRD Minnows. I used it quite a bit, caught a lot of fish on it, uh, has a crazy wicked walking action underneath the water, and in my opinion, is almost a better tool than most of my Ned setups, just because it's just a tad bigger, easier to throw, and uh, for me, has a lot of action in a little bait. All right, I say this every week when we do these videos. If you like what you're seeing here and you are learning stuff, just come over here and press that button. I need you to press that button. I want you to subscribe. I want you to be in this virtual classroom every week. We can bring more stuff to you more consistently, more frequently, and better quality. If you've been watching some of the Plantation In series, you can see I have a cameraman in those series. The more of you that subscribe and are watching this channel, the more often that can happen. All right, until, well, tomorrow the next day, I've got to get right back at rigging all this stuff up and I've got to get on the water so I can produce some more of this stuff for you.